Hello friends, this is Santosh Jangi and welcome to the chemistry class. We are dealing today with the first unit of the 12th class, solid state. So whenever in my regular class, I used to open up this topic with one question. Matter is existing in three different physical forms, solid, liquid and the gas. Out of these three forms, what do you feel which is the most important state of the matter? And I am getting some beautiful answers from the students. Some of the students are going to say solid is more important. It is because our body itself is a solid. Some students are going to say that liquid is more important because we are using water in the liquid state without which we cannot survive. And some are going to say that gas because for respiration we require oxygen without which even we cannot leave for a minute. And finally, I am giving a conclusion that all the three states of matter are important. Solid, liquid as well as gas. Now just look at the arrangement of the particles which is going to decide the existence of the matter in which physical state. See in the solid, particles are present very close to one another. and held by strong attractive forces and when we move from liquid to the gases distance between the particles goes on increasing as a result attractive forces are decreasing so it is clear that in solid particles are held by very strong attractive forces as a result particles cannot move from one place to another place simply they are oscillating on this basis only we are defining solids what the solids are Solids are the substances in which we have particles in a fixed position. So the position of the particles is fixed. And these particles simply they are oscillating about their main position. Based on the arrangement of the particles only we are getting different properties for the solids. Solids have definite mass and occupy definite volume. Solids show rigidity. It means it cannot move, they cannot move from one place to another place. Solids are highly incompressible it is because already the particles are present very close to one another so we cannot compress the particles further nearer to one another solids show high density so like this we can give many properties for the solids and these are some important properties now after learning about properties of the solids and the definition of the solids we are moving to the next part, types of solids. In crystalline silica, silicon and oxygen atoms are arranged regularly systematically. And this regular arrangement gives a definite geometrical shape to the crystalline silica. Whereas in the amorphous silica, particles are arranged irregularly and we are not getting a definite geometrical shape. So this is an important thing on the basis of which we classify solids as crystalline and amorphous solids and we are defining the solids. What are the crystalline solids are? Solids with the regular arrangement of the particles. And definite geometrical shape. Solids with a regular arrangement of the particles and definite geometrical shape. We call them as crystalline solids. What are the amorphous solids are then? Solids with irregular arrangement of the particles and shape. We call them as amorphous solids. Crystalline solids are actually the solids. So we are calling crystalline solids as true solids. Whereas amorphous solids are called as pseudo solids or even 
these are called as supercooled liquids why we are calling amorphous solids as pseudo solids then it is because amorphous solids are actually in between solids and liquids and they are the supercooled liquids not only this amorphous solids are showing slow fluidity particles of the amorphous solids are moving very very slowly and one best example we take for this if you get a chance of visiting some old buildings say for example you want to visit mysore palace which is having life span of more than uh, 50 100 years now just move your hand on a window glass so this is a window glass of a very old building on which we are going to move our hand in the upside down direction when you move your hand in the upside down direction what you are going to feel during the moment you feel that this upper portion is little bit thin and lower portion is little bit thick why this is so we know that glass is mainly known for its plain surface now there is a irregularity on the surface we have upper portion a little bit thin and lower portion a little bit thick it is because when the glass is kept in vertical position for many years molecules of the glass are moving from upper region to the lower region and we are observing slow fluidity that's why amorphous solids are called pseudo solids in crystalline solids we are observing an isotropy now let us try to understand what is an isotropy and for this we are considering a two dimensional structure of a crystalline solid look at the structure we are going to move along the line ab and cd when you move along the line ab on the left side of the line ab you find the blue colored particles and on the right side you are observing a red colored particles and similarly when you are moving along the line cd alternate blue and red colored particles are present it means when we move along different directions we are getting difference in the arrangement of the particles due to difference in the arrangement of the particles physical properties measured are different in different directions and this is called anisotropy physical properties like refractive index electrical conductivity etc we know measure and we are getting the values different in the different directions and this is what observed in the crystalline solids and we call it as an isotropy it is all due to once again regular arrangement of the particles in amorphous solids we are observing isotropy physical properties measured are same in all the directions we call it as isotropy in the structure of crystalline solids consider a small reason there is a regularity in the arrangement of the particles this is called short range order regular arrangement of the particles in a small region we call it as a short range order and this is going to repeat in the entire crystal we call this as long range order repetition of regular arrangement of the particles in the entire crystal we call it as long range order of course we are defining amorphous solids as the solids with irregular arrangement of the particles but when you consider a small region in that small region you find that there is a regularity in the arrangement of particles but it is not going to repeat only in a small area there is some regularity in the arrangement of particles it means amorphous solids are showing short range order crystalline solids show sharp melting point amorphous solids are showing range of melting point sharp melting point means if you take a pure crystalline solid and if suppose its melting point is given as around 180 degrees celsius exactly at 180 degrees celsius only the solid is going to melt but it is not the case of uh, amorphous solid in case of amorphous solid always a range of melting point will be given say for example 180 to 185 degrees celsius when we cut the crystalline solid with a sharp edged tool we are cutting pieces with a smooth surface whereas amorphous solids are forming pieces with a rough surface and for this also we can take a best example 
all metals except mercury are crystalline solids. You can take a cutted iron bar and see the surface of the cutted piece. Definitely you find that surface is very very smooth and the bars, these bars we are using for constructing the buildings. This is because iron is a crystalline solid. Check a, take a chalk piece. Chalk piece which we are using and just break it. See the surface. Definitely we are finding a rough surface on the broken surface of the chalk. Crystalline solids are forming pieces with a smooth surface. Amorphous solids are forming pieces with rough surface. Crystalline solids are having definite heat of fusion. Whereas amorphous solids are not having a definite heat of fusion. Like this, we can differentiate crystalline solids and amorphous. Okay, after learning about the solids, properties of the solids, types of solids, let us concentrate on types of crystalline solids. We are dividing crystalline solids mainly into four types based on the particles which are going to build the crystalline solids. Molecular solids, ionic solids, covalent or network solids and the metallic solids. See, Molecular solids are divided further into three types. Non-polar molecular solids, polar molecular solids, hydrogen bonded molecular solids. We are going to concentrate on all these crystalline solids one by one. We see the first one. Molecular solids. Crystalline solids which contain molecules are called molecular solids. First type in the molecular solid, non-polar molecular solid. As the name itself indicates, these are the solids which contain non-polar molecules. For example, I am going to consider solid chlorine. You can see Cl atoms are held by covalent bond and between the Cl2 molecules we find dispersion forces or the London forces. These are the van der Waals forces which are existing between non-polar molecules. Non-polar molecules are nothing but the molecules where there is no any charge separation. So the crystalline solids or you can say the molecular solids which contain non-polar molecules are called non-polar molecular solids. And the molecules here are held by London forces or the dispersion forces. We can take some examples for non-polar molecular solids. First example, solid carbon dioxide we call it as a dry ice. Solid carbon dioxide, we are calling it as dry ice because when we keep solid carbon dioxide on some surface, it goes on evaporating without wetting the surface. That's why solid carbon dioxide is commonly known as a dry ice. Even we can take solid iodine where I2 molecules are held by dispersion forces or London forces. And as I have shown you, solid chlorine, many examples can be taken where the molecules are non-polar and they are held by dispersion forces or the London forces. Apart from this, you just concentrate on this example. Noble gas solids, solid helium, neon, argon are also considered as non-polar molecular solids. It doesn't mean that noble gas atoms are forming molecules. We know that noble gas atoms are non-reactive, they never form molecules. Then why these noble gas solids are taken as non-polar molecular solids? The only reason is in these noble gas solids, whatever the noble gas atoms are present, they are held by London forces or dispersion forces. That's why they are placed in the non-polar molecular solid. So concentrate on these. We can expect some questions related to these in competitive exams. After learning about the non-polar molecular solid, let us concentrate next on Polar molecular solid. These are nothing but the molecular solids which contain polar molecules. And we take the example of solid HCl for this. See, in HCl on H we have a delta plus charge and on the Cl we have a delta minus charge. H and Cl are held by covalent bond. H is less electronegative than compared to Cl. As a result, Cl attracts shared pair of electron more towards itself it is getting negative charge delta minus charge and hydrogen is getting delta plus charge hcl molecules are held by dipole dipole attractive forces what actually the dipole means 
in HCl on H we have delta plus and on Cl we have delta minus. Di indicates to pole indicates charge. Since we have two charges, we are calling it as a dipole. So when we concentrate on the polar molecular solids, we find polar molecules which are held by dipole-dipole attractive forces. And for the polar molecular solid, we can take the best example that's what solid HCl. Third type of molecular solid, we call it as hydrogen bonded molecular solid. As the name itself indicates, these are the molecular solids which contain molecules held by hydrogen bonds. And for this, we take best example, ice. You can see the structure of ice where each water molecule is surrounded by two intermolecular hydrogen bonds. Such a solids where the molecules are held by hydrogen bonds are called hydrogen bonded molecular solids. So this is the first type of crystalline solid that's for the molecular solid and in the molecular solid we learnt three types non-polar, polar and hydrogen bonded. Okay, let us concentrate on the second type of crystalline solid. It is nothing but ionic solid. The best example we take for the ionic solid is sodium chloride. We know this. Sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal and in sodium chloride Na plus and Cl minus ions are held by ionic bonds and you can see the ionic bond between Na plus and Cl minus. So what are the ionic solids are? Crystalline solids containing metal cation and non-metal anion held by ionic bonds or we call it as electrostatic force of attraction. I repeat, crystalline solids containing metal cation and non-metal anion held by ionic bond or electrostatic force of attraction. After learning about the ionic solid, we go for the third type of crystalline solid, covalent or network solid. For covalent or network solid, we take two best examples. You can see the picture, we have a structure of diamond and graphite. Diamond and graphite are the allotropes of carbon where carbon atoms are held by covalent bonds. So these two are the best examples for covalent or network solids. Crystalline solids containing non-metal atoms held by covalent bonds are called covalent or network solids. Last type of crystalline solid we see, metallic solid. All metals we would place in the metallic solid. Look at the structure of the metallic solid we have taken. We know this, metals are the elements which have low ionization energy and they are capable of readily losing electrons. In the metal, metal atoms lose electrons and convert to cation. Electrons lost by the metal atom, they remain inside the metal only and they are the delocalizer electrons. Delocalizer electrons in the sense, these electrons are capable of moving anywhere inside the metal. See, metal is nothing but a sea of electrons and we are explaining the structure of the metal now by using one important model called electron C model. What the metallic solids are then, what they contain, what are the constant particles then. In metallic solids, we find metal cations and free electrons held by special type of bond we call it as metallic bond. So this is a, we explain four types of crystalline solids. So we learnt four types of crystalline solids, molecular solids in that three types we discussed, polar, non-polar and hydrogen bonded, ionic solids, covalent or network solids and the metallic solids.